Good morning, and welcome to worship with us this morning at Santa Teresa Hills Presbyterian Church in San Jose, California. I'm Pastor Deb. We'll begin with the Psalm of the Day, Psalm 111, New Revised Standard Version. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is God's work, and God's righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. God has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is God's name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. Amen. Amen. Again, we're happy to welcome all of you who are here with us today, whether on YouTube or here with us on Zoom. Uh, I'm Pastor Deb. This morning, I'm assisted by Zoom host Dave Robertson, liturgist Beatrice Toche, pianist Tiffany Shi, and our music director, Hugh McDivitt. We will also be enjoying an anthem from the San Jose State University Recital Choir a bit later. Welcome to all who are worshiping with us. We are happy you've joined us today. In preparation for worship, let us reflect on James 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Amen. Beatrice. Uh, let's listen to our call to worship. God is a source of wisdom, the fount of life eternal. Great are the works of the Lord. Glorious and majestic are God's deeds. Extol the Lord with all your heart. Let us listen for God's wisdom today. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise, come sing, O church, in joy.
a call, let's listen to a call to confession. Seeking the wisdom of the Lord, let us consider how we have lived, confessing our sins and trusting in the mercy of God. Let us take a moment for silent reflection and confession. The prayer of confession. All knowing God, we are your children, but we have turned away from your wisdom and walked in our own ways. We have lived carelessly and squandered our time. We have been foolish and failed to understand your will. We have been drunk with the wine of this world and debauched in our own desires. Purge us from evil and fill us with your spirit. Clear our minds from clutter that we may discern what is right and walk in your ways. Amen. Amen. Assurance of forgiveness. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. A hymn of response, glory to God, whose goodness shines on me. Now we come to the time with the children. Of course, this is for children of all ages. Who's the smartest person you know? My mom was really smart. She read about three books a week and she was a reference librarian. She was a person you always wanted on your team for trivial pursuits. Seems like she knew almost everything. But maybe you have somebody else in your family or at school, or you've seen somebody on TV, some of those Jeopardy uh, contestants, maybe even somebody here in church. But now who's the wisest person you know? What's the difference between being smart and wise? In the Bible, it tells us how King Solomon asked for wisdom. He was supposed to have been the wisest ruler that ever lived. Then there were the three wise men who followed the star to see baby Jesus. What is the difference between being smart and being wise? If you're smart, it means you know a lot of facts and information. But if you're wise, you make good decisions and good choices. Do you always eat what's good for you? Like your vegetables? Do you share with your sister or brother or friends? Do you spend all of your money or do you save some and maybe give some of it to church or other good causes? Do you always wear a helmet when riding your bike or a seatbelt when you're in the car? Those are wise things to do. Myself, of course, I know what I should eat, but then I like ice cream, I like cake, even candy. So I don't always make the wisest decisions. I know that I should walk every day, and I try, but 
sometimes, again, I don't always make a wise decision, even though I know a lot about those things. But sometimes you're wondering, well, who can help us know what's right? Maybe our parents, teachers, maybe God. We might find some answers in the Bible, too. Reading the Bible can help you make wise choices. God wants what's best for us, so God gave us some rules to follow that can help us, like not telling lies, not stealing, listening to our parents and respecting them. All those are in the Ten Commandments. It's in Exodus chapter 20, if you're not sure what I'm talking about. So if we listen to the Bible, we can learn to make good choices and be wise. But remember, it's not enough just to know the right thing, but to do it. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. What did Jesus command us to do? Love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbors as ourselves. So let's make wise choices that show we love God and love our friends and family and neighbors. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us the Bible to help teach us how to be wise. Help us to listen to other people who can help us as well. Help us to learn about Jesus and how to make good choices that will show that we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Amen. God has something to say. God has something to say. Listen, listen. Pay attention for God has something to say. Let's listen to our first scripture reading as it is written in the book of 1 Kings 3, verses 3 to 14. I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David only. He sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walks before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between God and evil, for who can govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
We'll now listen to our anthem, sung by the San Jose State University Recital Choir. The Psalms of Ascent are a section of the Psalms that run from Psalm 120 to Psalm 133 or 134. They were sung by pilgrims on the way to Jerusalem as they made annual or semi-annual treks to worship and sacrifice at the temple. Sometimes wisdom is not found in striving for knowledge and striving for greater things, but sometimes wisdom is being silent and quiet in God's presence. The setting of Psalm 131 is written by Jeffrey Van, who is Professor Emeritus of Music at the University of Minnesota. Uh, it's one of my favorite choral pieces, and it's actually, I said it was the recital choir, but it's actually the group Crescendo that Debbie and I have been involved in for 25 years. And this was a performance from my uh, graduate conducting recital at San Jose State. Thank you. That was really lovely. And now hear our second scripture reading from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I love Proverbs, not just the book of Proverbs in the Bible, but wise sayings in general. I tend to collect them. Each culture has its own way of passing wisdom on to their children, and Proverbs are usually an important part of that. 
I enjoy seeing how different cultures express this wisdom. For example, you've probably heard of the straw that broke the camel's back, but have you heard about la gota que colmo la copa, which is Spanish for the drop that overflowed the cup, a proverb from Puerto Rico. You've probably also heard, let sleeping dogs lie. But in Cameroon, there's a saying, if you do not step on the dog's tail, he will not bite you. At least I found this, <laughs> I found this online. I hope it's a real Cameroonian proverb. Back in Bible times, they must have loved proverbs too. The book of Proverbs is full of many wise sayings, such as a soft answer turns away wrath. Go to the ant, you lazy bones, and consider its ways and be wise. Or better a dinner of vegetables where love is than a fatted ox and hatred with it. When one of my friends was young, a pastor recommended reading Proverbs each summer in August before school started to give him wisdom to begin the school year right. There are 31 days in August and 31 chapters in Proverbs, so you could read one a day, although I think any time is a good time to read the Bible. I ran across some Proverbs recently that reminded me of the story of King Solomon's request for wisdom. From the African nation of Malawi, a great leader is an ordinary person with extraordinary wisdom. And from Ghana, wisdom is like a baobab tree. No one individual can embrace it. Baobabs are huge, huge, huge trees that can grow up to 100 feet tall and whose trunks can measure up to 30 feet in diameter. In thinking about ruling the kingdom he had inherited from his father David, Solomon must have felt overwhelmed, like trying to stretch his arms around a baobab tree. But despite his youth, Solomon already had three things going for him. He loved God, he sought God's presence, and he was humble enough to ask for God's help. Our passage begins right after Solomon's marriage to Pharaoh's daughter. This was quite a diplomatic achievement for the young king, but it may have made him realize the difficulties he faced leading a country that had grown large enough to form an alliance with Egypt. The writer of 1 Kings reminds us that Solomon loved the Lord and walked in the statutes of his father, David. Solomon showed his love for God by following God's commandments, a good place to start. A Psalm 111 that I read earlier today reminds us, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That doesn't mean we're to be afraid of God. The word fear has a sense of reverence or respect here. As the contemporary English version reads, respect and obey the Lord. This is the first step to wisdom and good sense. Solomon had already begun to walk in the path of wisdom by showing God respect and reverence in obeying God's laws. The commandments do not steal, do not murder, do not commit adultery. They're not there to spoil our fun, but to protect us and others. They're like guardrails that keep us from falling off a precipice. When we were in Zambia, we visited the spectacularly beautiful Victoria Falls, where the Zambezi River drops 350 feet into the canyon below. There are many, many places where you can view the falls, but most of them have guardrails built so that people don't tumble into the gorge. Without statutes such as the Ten Commandments, we might fall into some serious trouble. John Calvin, the 16th century reformer and father of Presbyterianism, taught that God's law is a blessing, a gift of a gracious God, solicitous for the welfare of his people. Perhaps that's why the psalmist wrote that reverence for God was the beginning of wisdom. Even if we obey God's laws out of fear of punishment, we're still protected by them. But God doesn't want a relationship with us based on fear. God wants a relationship of love and respect. Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Solomon loved God and showed it by keeping God's commandments, at least at this stage in his life. Solomon was also wise in that he sought God's presence. People in those days didn't believe that God could be found just anywhere. 
they thought it was proper to go to special sacred places to worship, such as the altar at Gibeon. The majestic temple, which Solomon would later build, had not yet been constructed, and Gibeon was a place where the tabernacle had been set up. That was the tent used for worship in the days that Hebrews had wandered in the wilderness after being freed from slavery in Egypt. It was later set up at Gibeon. As such, it was a place used for worship by their descendants until the temple was built. Dr. Julian de Chazier of McCormick Theological Seminary asks, would Solomon have had this epiphany in his common everyday surroundings? We will never know. He goes there to be in the presence of the Lord, and he is gifted with an intense encounter with God. When we're consciously seeking God, we're more likely to perceive what God is trying to tell us. Yes, God will use many things to get our attention. Often people turn to God in times of distress. But if we seek God's presence, even in good times, like Solomon, he just inherited his father's kingdom, formed an alliance with Egypt and gotten married, but he was still seeking God's presence. I think that God is pleased when we do that. When some kids go away to college, they only call when they need money. But it's always nice to hear, hi, mom. Hi, dad. I just called because I wanted to talk to you. I wonder if God ever feels that way about us. Finally, we see that Solomon is humble. Even though he became one of the greatest kings of all history, someone whose name is known even 3,000 years later, he asked for God's help to rule his people. When God says, ask what I should give you, Solomon responds, I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. Solomon didn't proclaim to God how great a king he was. Rather, he confessed that he was inexperienced and lacked wisdom and needed God's help. Solomon's attitude is echoed in Proverbs 11.2. When pride comes, then comes dishonor. But with the humble, there is wisdom. In Tanzania, they say, if you are filled with pride, you will have no room for wisdom. Why is wisdom associated with being humble? This is not humble in the sense of letting people walk all over you. Rather, it's humble in the sense of admitting you don't know everything. It is the opposite of pride and arrogance. It's having a teachable spirit rather than being a know-it-all. Proverbs 15.32 says, Those who ignore instruction despise themselves, but those who heed admonition gain understanding. The story is told of someone watching a golf pro at his work. Every time the pro suggested a way for his pupil to improve his stroke, the pupil interrupted with his own version of what was wrong and how to correct it. After a few minutes of this interference, the golf pro began to agree with his student. At the end of the lesson, the student paid the pro, congratulated him on his expertise as a teacher, and left, satisfied with the lesson. The guy watching the golf pro asked, why did you just go along with him? You were giving him some really good tips, but he ignored them. And the golf pro answered, it's a waste of time to sell answers to a man who wants to buy echoes of his own ideas. Ignoring the advice of experts is not wise. I've learned in my life that if someone wants to give me advice or even criticism, it's best to listen to what they have to say. I don't necessarily have to follow their advice, but I should at least listen and judge for myself. I won't learn anything if I don't listen. Like Solomon, we need to realize that we don't know everything. God alone is wise. If you continue reading in 1 Kings, you'll see that Solomon gave thanks to God. This is also wisdom. Our passage in Ephesians this morning reminds us to give thanks to God the Father at all times. Giving thanks takes us out of ourselves and helps us look beyond our present difficulties. It gives us perspective. There's always something we can be thankful for. Our health, if we have it, our food, friends, family, the beauty of nature that surrounds us. According to psychologists, being thankful is good for our mental health. 
and it's a sign of wisdom. Finally, Solomon did not ask for wisdom for himself, but in order that he might do a good job leading his people. The goal of wisdom is to help others and to glorify God. And I think we help ourselves too when we try to act wisely. Otherwise, the pursuit of wisdom could become just another idol. True wisdom is unselfish and generous. James writes in his epistle that the wisdom from above is peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits. James also writes in chapter one, if any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given you. Often, we don't know if we're praying according to God's will, but asking for wisdom and courage and strength to act on what we know is wisdom, asking for wisdom is always a good prayer. Just be open. Wisdom may come from a friend, a book, a podcast, even the Bible. Be looking for it. Thankfully, while God will give us wisdom if we ask, the good news is God doesn't judge us by how wise or how foolish we are. Rather, it's by God's grace that we enter into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. As an earlier passage in Ephesians reminds us, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 2.5 that our faith does not rest on human wisdom, but on the power of God. So may we love God, obey God's commandments to the best of our ability, seek God and God's wisdom. Then we will live, as it says in Ephesians, not as unwise people, but as wise, giving thanks to God the Father, at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that you have given us this promise. If we ask for wisdom, you will give it to us. Lord, we know that many are lacking wisdom these days, maybe many of us right here. And we do pray for wisdom to know how to act and how to um, deal with difficulties and problems that we face not just for our sake, but for the sake of others and to glorify you, to glorify your name. The world needs wisdom now, Lord, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we have our hymn of response, Come and Seek the Ways of Wisdom, number 174. This is new, but I think it's not too difficult.
Now we come to our time of prayer. Let me say first how wonderful it is to see all of you here. Thank you for taking time out of your Sunday morning to join us. We have some um, church members who are in need of prayer. I'll just mention briefly Lori and her daughter, Valerie. Um, Valerie's having um, chemotherapy for colon uh, cancer, so we need to keep them in prayer. And many people who are traveling and also students and teachers who are coming back. Um, and I'm thinking about the people of Haiti uh, who suffered from an earthquake, Afghanistan. Of course, all of the people suffering from COVID, Jerry's eye surgery tomorrow. So I think if any of you want to offer up prayers for these people, even though I've mentioned them, it's perfectly fine. Um, and then when you finish, uh, say God of life and hope, and we'll all respond here our prayer. Um, and any that I haven't mentioned, feel free also. So let's go ahead and turn to the Lord in prayer. And you may feel free to speak up even if I don't see your hand raised. And I, I see Barb. I would like to offer prayers for the first responders uh, for all the wildfires that are happening, not only in California, but Oregon and Utah. And for the people who, many people who have lost their homes and especially for the wildlife that is, um, has been dispersed out of their uh, natural habitat. Uh, God of life and hope. Here, here. Here. Cheryl. Uh, I want to lift up Angela Pumphrey. She's probably out there on YouTube. And, but she adds a, a low, low blood pressure and some heart issues and, and fainted when she was doing her crosswalk duties. And so just thanks to the people that helped her to um, get it back up. And she seems to be better now, but just keep her in your prayers as that's something she's going to have to watch for now. So, God, life and hope. Here are Here our prayers. prayers. Mary. My sister's having surgery Tuesday, so I'd like to put her. Her name is Lori. God of life and hope. Here are our prayers. Here are our prayer. Joy. Joy. I have two prayers. Do you hear the echo? Yes. You still hear an echo? I'm sorry. Um, I've been having trouble with my sound. Go ahead. Just make it uh, brief what you have to say. We'll listen. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Uh, we'll listen. Okay. I have two prayers, one for my friend, Daniel. Okay. The other is Mary Cole Miller, our former member here, has breakthrough COVID and made me really believe that it can happen. It was fully vaccinated. God of life and hope. Go all the way to heaven. Any other requests? If I'm not seeing you, just go ahead. I'll go with one. I uh, want to lift up a prayer of thanks. I was uh, off visiting my dad in Southern California last weekend and first part of this week. So it's nice to have uh, just some time together and uh, uh, enjoyed it. So God of life and hope. Here are our prayers. I just want to say thanks to God for the healing that I've had in my body and for you all for your prayers. I appreciate that very much. I'm getting better all the time. And I lift up Jerry and his surgery tomorrow and just ask God's blessing on you, Jerry, and um, that the surgery goes well and the healing goes uh, be, is quick, that you heal readily and that the surgery is successful. God of life and hope. 
Anyone I'm missing? Let's join together in prayer. Lord, you have heard all of our prayers spoken and unspoken, and we would lift up before you those who are ill, especially Valerie and others that we are thinking of, Lord. Uh, my sister-in-law, Marty. We also pray for all of those who are going back to school, um, the teachers and the students, and give thanks for Chris that she's feeling better. We pray for crossing guards like Angela, and we thank you for their willingness to volunteer. We pray for all who are traveling, that they may have safe travels and return home safely and in good health. Lord, we think of many people who are suffering from COVID, especially in states like Florida and other places where um, people are not as well vaccinated as here. And we give you thanks, Lord, that um, people are getting vaccines and we pray that even more will be able to be vaccinated and be safe. Lord, we pray also for the people of Afghanistan, the people of Haiti, people of Cameroon, and all places in the world that are suffering from natural disasters or war. Protect your people, Lord, and grant wisdom to their leaders. And now, faithful God, you invite us to ask gifts of your goodness. In your steadfast love, receive our requests for the church, the world, and for your people. And now let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You may offer each other a sign of peace across the internet or in your own living room. Peace be with you all. Amen. With joyful hearts, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Let us pray. Receive, O God, the fruits of our labor, and with these gifts, accept the offering of our lives. Unite us with Christ, that we may share in his ministry, and glorify you. Amen. And again, we thank all those who have continued to give their tithes and offerings during these difficult days of COVID. Let us join now in our hymn of departure, God of Grace and God of Glory, number 307.
Thank you, Tiffany, as always, for playing these beautiful hymns for us. A few announcements on Saturday is the, the 21st is the Joint Deacons and Elders Meeting at the home of Cheryl and Paul Elliott at noon till 2 p.m. August 28th, we're trying something different. We'll have a young adult fellowship game night at church from 6 to 9 p.m. And this is open um, mainly for people in their 20s and 30s. Um, but if uh, anybody who has graduated from high school and is 18 or older is welcome. Um, we're also going to have on September the 10th, the Giants Ball Game Fellowship Activity. September 12th is our homecoming and September 18th, a Saturday, our session retreat. Um, and later also in September, we get more information about this. We'll have a special visit with um, a missionary couple that we're supporting down on the border, um, the Adams, Mark Adams uh, and his wife, Marion. So they'll be with us. I think it's September 19th. All of these things you'll be able to read about in the Echoes from the Hills newsletter, which will come out at the end of the month. And there'll be more information in our bulletin. Any other announcements I'm missing? So let's hear the charge and benediction. Walk in wisdom and grow in understanding of God's will. Seek God and obey God's commandments out of love, not compulsion or fear. Go forth to love and serve. In Jesus' name, and now may the blessing of God, the source of life, the grace of Christ, the bread of life, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, the power of life, be with you now and forever. Amen. We hear our postlude from Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. That was beautiful. Dancing over here. Yeah, I know. She was threatening to turn the camera on me, so I had to stop. <laughs> Thanks again to everybody who joined us today. I think this seems to be the low season when a lot of people are traveling and maybe parents are busy with uh, getting their kids ready for school. So I'm really happy to see everybody here. And we'll be back in person on the 12th those who are feeling comfortable and able to make it but we'll still be on zoom for those who are not able or feel better watching from home
Or it's too long of a drive. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Are we just having service? We're not having the homecoming thing we normally have, right? Mm -hmm. I thought we were going to try and do the yeah. homecoming. Uh, oh, breakfast. We'll do the breakfast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it at our meeting on yeah. Saturday. The yeah. Yeah. To the, see the how we can best do the, that. If we're outside. Outside should be okay, I would yeah. think. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Horace wants to remind us that our, actually Lynn wants to remind us the newsletter deadline is Thursday, August 19th. Oh. Yeah. And the newsletter will be coming at the end of the month.